Now, magazine-wise, it's interesting. Clearly, the Germans at HK looked at the grease gun mag because they have a double column mag for the UMP, and then it goes to single position feed for the UMP. And the UMP is a super reliable gun. It's much more reliable than people give it credit for. I had a buddy of mine when I was in the military actually had one and went thousands of rounds with never cleaning the gun and never malfunctioned one time. He was a big fan of the UMP 45 in particular. It's interesting. This is a 30 round magazine. 25, 25 yeah and this one as you know is a bit of a hassle to load yeah especially it starts getting full that one's actually pretty easy to load. not too bad plus it's got a viewing window on the side where you can kind of check the status this thing has no holes or ports so you know exactly when you got 30 rounds in it you've got a collapsible buttstock this is a side folding buttstock now the, th the ding i have on the side folder it's not bad for what it is fairly rigid and whatnot it's a bit long so actually, HK, from a design point of view, should offer a replacement buttstock that's a little bit shorter because when you have a body armor, the length of pull on the UMP is too long. Yeah, it's a good inch and a half too long. If you look at the overall dimensions of the gun, the, with the stocks folded, the uh, UMP is a dramatically smaller gun. Yeah, very compact, hence the beauty of the UMP and why it still has some merit these days because when you fold that stock and stow it in like a vehicle or a helo or, or any confined space, it's an extremely compact weapon. And then, of course, you have your Picatinny rail mounting surfaces for optics and whatnot. Really a pretty cool gun. To be perfectly honest with you, when I first saw the UMP, and I know you were like me, I compared it to the MP5, oh. which is a classic. And I was really down on the gun. Exactly. But it's one of those guns, the beauty's in the eye of the beholder. It's incredibly simple, and for what it is, well made. And it's one of those things, the more you shoot it, the more you appreciate it. It's actually a pretty cool gun. Yeah, interestingly enough, this had been the heart of the HK business, face they probably sold more MP5s, with exception, say the G3 rifle, than any other small arm they produced. And but they were looking at when they went to the uh, G36 and the polymer series of, of battle rifles and assault rifles, they wanted to do the same thing in the submachine gun. And their goal was, this is an expensive gun to make. Yeah, they want to get away from the stamp sheet metal roll lock guns. Yeah, we and, all know that. And they looked at this as a net replacement. It's kind of interesting. And we both know that there was a period when the submachine gun ruled in law enforcement, special operations, the military. And quite honestly, it was request from the unit you used to be in that wanted an MP5 in 45 caliber. And HK finally answered the mail, unfortunately, probably two decades too right. late because the submachine gun had died out on Yeah, the M4 carbine, as we know, it has taken the place of what these subguns are all about. They still have their role, but it's even more of a niche role now than it ever was. And it's interesting, and HK answered the call for a 45 subgun in what we'll call the new era of submachine guns. Which is kind of wild. A topic that you and I have talked about many times, I'm sure the viewers at home, for whatever reason, HK as a company has really embraced the 45 ACP cartridge. They have more pistols, they have a subgun, they have a sporting version of the UMP, the USC, and 45. They got more 45 guns than any other manufacturer I can hardly think of, and particularly European manufacturer. Yeah, what do you think you, that is, Ken? <laughs> Maybe they learned a lesson about the 45 Auto a couple of times in the last Yeah, century. clearly, apparently that's it. Apparently they had, it had an effect on them. Obviously so. Yeah. I would say, and my call is that, you know, this gun, the grease gun fires like most second gen guns from an open bolt. This gun fires from a closed bolt, both blowback. Yeah. But from an accuracy, ease of shooting standpoint, I think we're going to find out in a little bit, this is probably a much easier gun to use. You know what else is interesting here? It is. It, it, there's really no locking mechanism here. It's a closed bolt blowback gun, which kind of sounds contradictory. One of the ways they get by with it here is the fire and pin safety, which is a hammer trip fire and pin safety. Bingo. Later adapted in a way for the HK416 and 417. Bingo. A lot of really sophisticated engineering went into this gun. And, and the beauty, like I said, is in, the, is in the simplicity of the design. Yeah, and I think we'd both agree the sighting system on this gun, you've got basically a open notch and a big ghost ring. If you look at the sighting, capability of both guns. This thing is adjustable. Sights are 100 times better than a grease than gun. Than a grease gun, without a doubt. Yeah, the hole in the grease gun sight is too small. The front sight, is, they're both fixed. There's no way to correct for unless you bend the front sight or file it down a bit. And if you just compare the size of the aperture, this one really handicaps yeah, you. Absolutely. And I remember back in the day seeing some of the guns the unit used, they actually V-notched. They got rid of the aperture and they V-notched the rear sight for quicker sight, front sight access. Bingo. Well, dude, it's time to load up some mags. I'll get the UMP loaded up, and then I'm going to see some of the drills you got set up. Okay, I got a couple of things where we're going to test primarily the compatibilities, how which is more effective, 
I think we kind of know the result, but let's see how it shakes. Absolutely, you never know, bro. And if you're game, why don't we get a little warmed up here, about 10 yards or so on the steel with the grease gun. Okay, you're on, okay, bro. Okay, let's shake it out. Going hot. Yeah, dude, give it a try. Seems to run pretty good. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude. She's yeah, a champ. You can, you can deal with that. Oh, yeah, dude, you can't complain. Obviously, heavy gun, but buddy, once you get into it and you know your technique, yeah. The results and that set. That slow psychic rate pays off a bit too. All right, all right, and now here's what we need to do. Let's paint them up and then let's do exactly the same thing with the UMP. You got it. Cool. Hey, thanks for watching the Vickers Tactical YouTube channel. To subscribe, click here. And to watch some of my favorite videos, click here. Have a good one. LAV out.